Myrtle. I'm trying to get arranged, things arranged better here. <laughs> I don't know, last time I had it good, this time it's not working out so good. <laughs> I'm in the same spot. Good morning, Rosemary. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? We're all surviving. Is there only three of us? So far. Lily was there, but she got an appointment, so she had to go. And I was told to help. Who, who was that? Lily Kay. Oh. She was making music, and it was nice. 
haven't told her how to record it. I've never, I'm not going to figure anything out. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I'm sitting over in the corner reviewing minutes. It's pretty exciting. Hello. Hi, dear. I'm not always using my cane today. I'm a, my hip is somewhat better. That's good. <clears throat> Water the tags by using the walker because I figured I'm not walking that far down the sidewalk and trying to figure out if I'm getting back. That's a good idea. I'll be right back. <clears throat> Hello. <laughs> hi, sweet. Kathy said hi. Uh, I said hello. I mean, hello. I said that with Kathy that was talking. Yeah. You knew that? Yes, I knew that. You have to get in the screen, darling. I don't have to. Yes, you do. We need to see you. Do you want me to get a pillow to sit on? Is that the right one? No. Oh, I know where it is. Where did you put that? I didn't. It's there. Oh. Hey.
Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I have two minutes left. I can say that. How's everyone this morning? Good. 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 Fine. Thank you. Good. Did we lose Lee? Yes. So Lee had an appointment right at noon. So okay. she asked if if she could record this, but then she turned off her Zoom. So I mm -hmm. am recording it for Lee. Okay. Well, it was fun just listening to her play there for a little bit. It was really nice. You guys missed out the early uh, entertainment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. David wanted to know. Thank you, Wendy. Wait, friends, I'm sorry. Friends. No. No. I told him I'm capable of going. No, no. Anything. Right. Well, I think we can get ourselves started. Before we do that, I'd like to. Uh, ask everyone just to pray for Gord and Sharon. Gord has got a bacterial infection in his bloodstream and they're working on getting that one resolved, but uh, things have gone along very well. And Sharon is just asking that we continue to pray for him. So let's just begin our day with, a, with our study with a bit of prayer. Let us pray. Lord, we do come before you seeking your blessing upon us as we gather to look at your words. We ask, Lord, that indeed you will be a part of all that we do, that your Holy Spirit will lead us and guide us and direct us. We pray, Lord, for Gord and Sharon, that you will continue to lay your healing hand upon him, that you will watch him and keep him and return him to his strength. We ask this in your name. Amen. All right, let me get the right mouse here. <laughs> hi, Lynn. So, as we, uh, hi, Lynn. You're muted. Lynn, you're muted. Okay. So She'll as we, it. as we, uh, as you read through that passage, we got you now. As you read through that, what jumped out at you? Uh, there was a few things for me, Steve. Uh, one was obedience, and okay. one was faith, and the other was fear. But fear not because he was scared of God, but fear because he, uh, he, uh, he trusted in him. Okay. Like it wasn't a fear that if, if we do something wrong, we're going to get punished kind of thing by him. This, this was a different fear. This was a reverence, I thought. Okay. That's why I, there, was, there was so many things jumped out, but there just wasn't one thing. Very good. Anybody else? What jumped out to me was um, Abraham basically giving Isaac to God or giving him back to God, however that worked. The, what kind of psyche it must have taken to do that. He completely trusted. He completely trusted God. Yeah. I missed part of that. Kathy, I need you to speak up a little bit. Abraham completely trusted God. Right. Okay, so the trust in God. Um, anybody else got anything different? Well, I thought like uh, Isaac was Abraham's only son. And he was willing to give him up. And then later, God gave up his only son. So I sort of saw a correlation there, I guess. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's there. Anyone else? I was thinking they must, uh, 
uh, children in those days must be totally different than the children we have because I would think traveling for three days off into nowhere land and this kid says nothing and his dad uh, uh, ties him up and lays him on the altar and doesn't say a word. I, I, I can't see that with kids nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> no screaming or anything. Are we there? <laughs> Are we there yet? <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, definitely kids were different, I guess. What was what was one of the things that uh, might help us with this study a little bit is uh, what did happen around that time frame that was perhaps a little more common than we would like to think. Anybody know that one? The travel? Travel, maybe. Making sacrifices. Child sacrifice. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a common thing that, that uh, child sacrifice was fairly common in a lot of those societies at that time, so. While this might be a different thing for us, others, especially at that time, wouldn't have seen it in such a way. So, but, a good but, then, but then God for, forbid human sacrifice? Yep, yep. And think of the irony of that one. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, so what's the most exciting thing about this passage? Somebody must have thought it was an exciting passage. What's the most exciting thing? Well, I, uh, for, for me, again, it, it was what was mentioned earlier about the similarity between John 3.16 and God right. giving up his son and uh, Isaac basically having the two to sacrifice, give up his son. That, that, really, that correlation, that parallelism. Okay. All right. So the correlation between uh, Abraham, God, Isaac, and uh, Jesus. Okay. Stick that one in the back of your mind for a little bit. Okay. All right. Anybody else find anything exciting in this passage? Well, that Isaac was saved at the last moment. Okay. Anything else? But how important to trust in Jesus in God? Uh, try a little, little louder, Lynn, please. Oh, how important your trust and faith are in God? Right. Okay, trust and faith in God. Okay. Um, so that was the exciting stuff. Now give me the stuff that you really want to tell me or you really want to ask questions about. What's the most troubling thing about this passage? That someone would sacrifice their child, that they would harm their child. Yeah, God, God asking or demanding Isaac sacrifice his child. That, that okay. was the thing that troubled me. So that someone would sacrifice their child and that God would ask that. Anybody else did they agree think with that? Then, or? Did they think back then that they couldn't speak, uh, you know, stand up to God and, and say, what are you asking me? Uh, what, you know, why are you asking me to give up my son? Okay. Like, well, no back talk or anything. I don't know, but we're going to allow you to do that for, on our behalf, Dulcie, because we don't want to take that chance. Well, thanks a lot. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What else? What else is troubling about this passage? I mean, sacrifice a child, yes, that God would ask for a child to be sacrificed. But does anybody see anything in regards to this uh, testing or trial or anything like that? Yeah, Any I guess. I guess God really wanted to see if he would choose 
God first over his son. Okay. Does anybody have a problem with the fact that God is even testing us? That's sure. exactly it. Yes. Okay. To me, that's the biggest thing. Okay. And what's your problem with that? Well, I'm pretty sure I'm failing a few tests. <laughs> okay. All right. And doesn't he know us already? Does maybe, he buddy, maybe, maybe he's just waiting for you to back talk him, Dulcie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm right here. Okay. All right. So, as 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 a hope and Steve that that uh, Abraham will remember God's promise to him. Maybe because um, that, that through that through Isaac he would have. It would make him a. Uh, it would be made a great nation. Well, that's, that's one of the things that's very troubling. Isaac was how old? Or not, sorry, Isaac. Abraham was how old? He was well into his 90s, okay? Um, maybe even a little bit more than that, depending on how old Isaac was. But he had waited all those years for the beginning of that promise that God had made. What was, the, what, was the God, what was the covenant? What was the promise that God made with Abraham? That he made a great nation. Say again? That God would make him a great nation. God would make him a great nation. Okay. Um, how was he going to do that? He was going to give him a son and and through the sun, it would make them a great nation. All right. So all of that time that, that Abraham spent uh, being faithful to God, all of a sudden, God says, the very means by which I'm going to fulfill my promise, my promise I'm going to take away. How are you feeling? I feel Is like there's fair? more to the story because... Abraham particularly seems to be tested repeatedly right. in his faith. Um, okay. He's asked to believe that he's going to become a parent when he's so old. And then he's asked to give the kid back. And I'm wondering what else was going on in his life that he got so tested. Yeah, I don't know. But, you know, Anna, we can see you're right here. There we go. I know. <laughs> I'm doing other jobs at the same time. <laughs> I see that. <coughs> okay. A lot of people have a problem with this passage <coughs> simply because not only is God testing, it's a really harsh test. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. So we have a problem with that. You notice the pattern of the dialogue between God and Abraham. Anybody pick up that pattern? Here I am. Right. Anything else? What's the pattern? Well, when uh, uh, Abraham had to sacrifice Isaac, and that's uh, the similarity is, is God giving his son on the cross. Yep, there's that. And we'll come to that. I just, I just want to look at this dialogue. Um, after these things, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham. Abraham said, here I am. Take your son. Okay. Okay. What's, what's the pattern here? It's complete obedience. Absolute obedience. Every time God speaks, Abraham says, I'll obey. I'm here. Right? And then, uh, you notice the pattern between... Isaac and Abraham. Isaac says to him, Father, Abraham. And Abraham says, here I am. Okay. Um, there's there's a, a pattern of uh, asking and responding, but always, in, always seems to be in the affirmative. There never seems to be a question in return. It's just, here I am, whatever you say. That's what will happen, all of those kinds of things, okay? All right. So just have a look at that dialogue and see how that works. How did God 
test Abraham's faith? Asked a lot of them. Okay. By asking to sacrifice his only son, begotten son. All right. Anybody else? Because if that's the only answers you're going to give me, we're way off here. They're, they're the right answers, but there's way more to it than saying that he's asking him to sacrifice his son. What's God really test? How's God really testing Abraham's faith? I gave you a hint a few minutes ago. What was the covenant? What was the promise? That he make a nation of. He'd, he'd make a nation of Abraham. Yeah. Okay. So what's the test? To see if it would fail. Know if he's... Abraham has to put God first. Okay. Does he want to know if he's the right person to do that with? To make nations well, of him? You would think that if he's asking him to sacrifice his son, there goes any hope of the covenant or the promise being fulfilled, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure he knew he was only asking him, even though but Abraham didn't know that, but God knew that. He was testing him to see if he would succeed or fail, and that he'd already promised him that if he would, like I said earlier, that if, if Abraham remembered God's promise to him, that he would make him a great nation through, through his son, that's what he was testing, that did, did uh, Abraham remember the promises that I offered him? Okay. And uh, so, are you going to are you going to fail or succeed in the test? Well, isn't isn't succeeding in the test failing in the promise? If he succeeds, no. What I mean, what, what I mean by succeeding, that he's he's not being set up to fail. He's being set up to succeed. How's he going in, to succeed if he sacrifices his son? Well, I think he, I think, I think Abraham is, 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 well, I think Abraham is, is realizing that God made a promise to him and I'll carry out God's command. And if I have real good faith in God, then he will, he will stop this because he's promised me to make my nation, to make a great nation from me. Okay. But how does, like, how it, does... like it's not a, it, it, it's a test, but it's not a, a temptation. When you tempt, I think when you tempt somebody, you tempt them to fail. Okay. Whereas if you if you test them, you're testing them to succeed. That's. Anybody have any other? Does that make sense? Anybody have any other thoughts about that? <laughs> Nobody? Okay. I think that God already knew that Abraham would follow through with this. So why put him through it? Why I then did God know. test Abraham? I don't to know. make him like a sword, strong. I don't know. <laughs> is he, is he, he Is he maybe testing Isaac? So Isaac has to carry on after Abraham. Maybe he's checking out Isaac to see if he would follow what his dad tells him to do. Could be. It could be. I know that uh, Isaac probably had a case of the willies every time he saw Abraham pick up a knife after that. <laughs> <laughs> Why did God test Abraham's faith? Because that's what we look at it as. Why is it was he to, testing Abraham? Is it to prove to Isaac and everybody around what the strength of faith can bring or how it can rescue you? 
maybe it's not about judging Abraham, but rather a lesson for everyone around. Could be that. It could be that. To make his faith strong and to make him a great leader. You already okay. said, here I am, what do I have to do? <clears throat> okay. Well, he tested Jesus, right? I mean, there's, there's lots of uh, examples in, in the Bible where... Can I get you just hold on to that for a minute, Jim? Okay. Okay. Uh, what did Abraham do to prepare for this testing? Well, he cut wood and walked for three days and got some coals ready and his knife ready. Okay. Tied up what else, did, what else did he do to prepare? Tied up Isaac. Took a long way. Built Took him a long altar. way. Yeah. But he brought he brought two servants with him. Brought two servants with them. What else did he do to prepare? He built the altar and prepared it. Okay. So did he pray? What, brought the kindling. Yeah. What you're telling me is he didn't do anything to prepare. He just did as he was told. Hey. Good, you. He did what he was told. Right? Wow. Place. Yeah. I know I don't like cutting it either. Okay. So, I, I think in this one, Abraham, part of Abraham's story is he really didn't do too much to prepare other than what God told him to do. Okay. Yeah, I'm not doing a Bible study. Story of, <laughs> I'm doing a Bible study. If you look back it's over the story of um, Abraham, does that look consistent with what Abraham always did? No. You mean in the previous chapters? Yeah, in, in the relationship yeah. between God and Abraham. How much time did Abraham spend preparing and how much time did Abraham spend thinking about it and how much time did Abraham just do what he was asked to do? What was the most well? He did it. He, he did it right away. I mean, he was he was obedient. He did it right away. He had a three days march, uh, okay. and he had a lot of time to think about what he was going to do. Mm -hmm. How do you suppose Sarah thought, felt about all of this? I imagine she was horrified. <laughs> I would, I would think, but. We don't know for sure what happened, okay? Why do you suppose God you know? was three days away for the sacrifice to take place? Someone mentioned that, Dulcie mentioned that. Why, why did God choose three days? You can, you can talk about Mount Moriah and all that sort of stuff, but I think there might be something else in there. What was that three days about? Contemplation, to think about it, what, it was, what his actions were. Right. What he was asked to do. Okay. So, what happens the more time you get to think about something? You worry about it. Worry about it? Doubt it. Doubt it? Procrastinate. Yeah. Question it. Question it. It's when the what devil else? moves in. The devil moves in. The longer something happens, what's more likely to happen to your mind? You're going to change it. You're going to keep it the same. You're going to become more resolute. You're going to wonder. Going to change it. Yep. Could happen that way, couldn't it? Okay. All right. Um, why? Why did? God choose Isaac to be the sacrifice. To test King Abraham for his feet. Okay. Yeah. 
Pete, were you going to say because something? Because he was really. Go ahead. He was really. He was really going to test uh, Abraham by offering his, his only begotten son. Again, I get back. I get back to that again. Eh? Right. Well, a couple of points we have to make here. Isaac wasn't Abraham's only son. Right. right. No. Isaac but was, was Abraham's his, son from Sarah. But he was his. He was his. Um, his previous son was was from uh, hey, the maid servant. The maid servant. So Isaac was basically from was the son from uh, Sarah and and Abraham. The the true line, if you want to call it that. Okay, that's the point. Uh, <laughs> the reason he was asking for Isaac was because everything. The covenant that God had made with Abraham hinged on Isaac. What more could he ask from Abraham? What more could he have asked from Abraham? Both sons. His wife, that's about it. Yeah. I mean, when you look at it was uh, ultimate. When you look at Job, from Job he took everything. Yeah. Right. From Abraham, he asked for what? His favorite son. Yes, but His far future. more than that. His future. More than that, even. That his bloodline would go on. He's asking for his bloodline. Yes, more than that. To give back the gift that God gave him? <clears throat> yes, but more than that. Eternal life. Nope, not that much. Darn. <laughs> <laughs> this, isn't, this isn't a children's time or a Sunday school lesson, okay? Um, <laughs> what was the whole point of that covenant relationship that God made with Abraham. It was a great nation that God was going to make out of Abraham, but that was only part of the, the, the covenant. That's only part of the point. What was God really doing? Lining up the bloodlines to go Lining down to Jesus. Lining up the bloodlines down to Jesus. He could have done that another way, do you think? Yeah. But yeah. Okay. So what's really going on here? What was that covenant really all about? Creation of Israel. Creation of Israel. We're getting close. What was it about? What was God ultimately trying to do through this covenant? Get ready for this great nation or, and, and his son, maybe? Yep, all of that. Now you're thinking too, too complicated. What was God trying to do? <laughs> Kathy? Trying to have complete obedience. Yeah, it, it was all about obedience. It was all about that. But put all of those things together, and what what's going on here? What's God creating? He created a covenant relationship with Abraham, but what was that relationship ultimately going to be? Like a chosen one, a chosen disciple. Not just a chosen disciple. The birth of uh, the birth of his son, God's son. Not just okay. Try oh, Jesus. Let me, let me let me help you out here. This covenant relationship was being made with Abraham, not for the sake of Abraham. Okay, that relationship was being made for the sake of God. God wanted to 
have a relationship with his creation, his people. Okay? And he was going to do that through this relationship with Abraham. He was going to create a, a nation of people that would be in relationship with him, with God. Okay? Abraham was just the beginning part of that relationship. Okay. The key to the whole relationship, everything that followed after that, was whom? Isaac. Who was the key to everything else? Yes, Isaac. Isaac was the key to the fulfillment of that relationship with all people. That would include every one of you. Okay? Those who come into relationship with God through uh, the father of our faith, we call him Abraham. Okay? So what was really at stake here by asking Abraham to sacrifice his son Isaac? Didn't be nobody to carry on. What would happen to that covenant? What would happen to that relationship? Be broken. Be broken. Wouldn't take place. Excuse right? me a second. Gina, I think yeah. you have someone mowing their lawn near you. Uh huh. I'm just going to mute you, so unmute when you want to talk, okay? Okay. Okay. Sorry. Carry on. So that the sacrifice was not just the son, a loved son, an only son who would be able to, to do that. The sacrifice had implications for all eternity, for every person, everyone down the line. Remember, it was, it was going to be as numerous as the stars in the sky. It was going to be as numerous as the sands on the beach, right? So what was, in, what was in jeopardy if Isaac was sacrificed was all of those. Everything was in jeopardy. Right? That's what God was asking Abraham to do. So it was far more monumental even than just his son Isaac, even though that is what crushes us. We have a problem with that because we see that as how could God possibly do that? Okay. But then when we stop and think about it, we have to stop and think, hey, wait, 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 wait. He's sacrificing my relationship with God if he puts Isaac on that altar. Right? Okay. What did Abraham do? Put him on the altar. He put him on the altar. Now, okay, let's have a look at that. Um, what, was, what was God's purpose in this test, in this, in this trial? Jim has given us, has come very, very close to the truth of this passage, okay? Um, and what I want you to think about is something that you, you've talked around that you haven't hit on it. You, you've mentioned Jesus and you've mentioned, you know, John 3, 16, all of those things. But I want to take you to the wilderness right after Jesus' baptism. Do you remember that? Who can go there? The Holy Spirit took Jesus into the wilderness. And what, what happened there? He was tempted. He was tempted. What's another word? Tested. He was tested. tested. What's another word? He was tried. Tempted, tried, tested. Okay. Who did the who did the testing? Who did the trying? Who did the tempting? God did. Satan, wasn't it? Satan did. For what purpose? Why did Satan tempt Christ? Why did he put him on test? Why did he put him in trial? Because he wanted to get him Jesus on his side. 
he wanted him to fail. To fail, yeah. Right. What happened to that covenant relationship if Jesus fails? Well, it's destroyed. We all it's lose. destroyed. The same kind of thing, right? Now, um, others would say that Jesus was not only put on test by Satan during that wilderness experience. What would some people say? How would was Jesus tested during that? Who tested them? God. God. Some people will say that Jesus was tested by God in the wilderness, and that God simply allowed uh, Satan to put the temptations in there, and that's what was the test. Right? <clears throat> uh, is that fair for everybody? Yeah. I'm not getting everybody nodding their head this way. Um, everybody, is that fair? Okay. So, partly to be tested like we're tested by Satan too? Sort of, yes. Okay. But what I want to look at is this. So God put Jesus into the wilderness to be tempted by Satan. That was his test. Okay. How did the test work out? The devil failed. Yes. Why did the devil fail? Because Jesus kept telling him like that he wouldn't do or or take the bribes from the devil because he he only followed God, his father. It was okay. the strength of the Holy Spirit. Strength of the Holy Spirit. All right. What did Jesus say? What did Jesus say? Would be in the turn the turn the stones to bread. What did Jesus say? Man, Man does not eat by bread alone. Man does not live by bread alone, but by the word of God. Every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. What is every word that proceeds from the mouth of God? What the is truth. that? The truth, the gospel. Okay. It's that what we understand about God. Okay. Jesus passed the test by defeating every temptation, okay? How did he pass the test? What was his strength in defeating those temptations? The word of God. Say it again, Pete. The word of God. His faith in his father? The word of God, his faith in his father. What do you call that? Trust. Trust. Okay. Let's go back to Abraham. All right. What can we say about Abraham? What's always said about Abraham? Abraham is the father of faith. The nation. Abraham's a father of faith. All right. He's referred to that by Paul, by Jesus, by the New Testament, by the Old Testament. He's the father of our faith. Okay. How does he display that? By his action. His absolute trust. His actions show his absolute trust in God. Yeah. Okay. What was the very first thing God asked him to do? Anybody remember? <clears throat> Take thy son. No, even before that. Uh -huh. Long before he oh, even God, had a oh. son. Leave his family. Leave his father, his mother, his family, his countryside, everything. Yeah. Right? Relatives, etc. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Val, we're going to ask you to just pick up and we're going to send you to um, North Korea. <laughs> you ready? No. <laughs> 
<laughs> you, you have you have approximately four hours to be ready to go. <laughs> that would be very difficult. Very difficult. But that's what God asked of Abraham. Just right. go. All right. And Abraham saying, where? What am I going to do when I get there? How am I going to, you know, how am I going to live? All that kind of stuff, right? No, he just went. No, he didn't. No, it's not right. <laughs> he didn't. He just picked up and. That's what I mean. He did. Went. He yeah. just picked up and went. All right. What does that tell us about Abraham? He's very obedient. Very obedient. Or, or impulsive. He trusts God. He trusts God. Absolute trust in God. He just picked up and went. Okay. And then God said to him, hey, Abraham, we're going to make a covenant with you. Okay. Uh, your wife, who is, you know, a uh, couple, a couple of months past childbearing years, is going to have a son, right? And out of that son, there's going to be a great nation made for you. And that great nation will be the people that God's going to have a relationship with in a very special way. And Abraham said, you know, originally, well, you got to be nuts because, you know, Sarah's more than a couple months past childbearing years. But what did he do? He accepted it as truth. And what happened? God came through and Sarah had a baby. Sarah had a baby in her old age. How old was she, by the way? Close to 100. Anybody want to say 90? I'll say 90. Okay. okay. Pretty sure I was 90. All right. And so Abraham's waited all this time. And all of the stuff that God has said to him was going to happen. Never a doubt that all of these things were going to happen. Right, Jim? Yep. Okay. So when God says, you're going to take your son Isaac and you're going to put him on a altar and you're going to sacrifice him. Abraham said, okay. Okay. What possibly would make Abraham say, okay. Trust in God. Trust in faith. Absolute faith. He's absolute trust. Okay. He gives a hundred percent of himself. Okay. So do any can any one of us do that? Could we no. pull that off? No. Why not? <laughs> Why not? I guess I'm not that trusting. <laughs> okay. And that's, that's probably a statement for all of us. But I want to look at this relationship between Abraham and God. All right. We always talk about how much faith Abraham had in God. We talk about Abraham's trust of God. We talk about Abraham being obedient to God. Okay. Did you ever turn that around? Yeah, God does that for us. Oh, right? you, mean, you mean God trusts in Abraham? Is that what you no. mean, turning it around? There you go. Say it again. Go ahead, Jim. God trusting Abraham would carry it through, would, would, would carry his, would, would go to the nth degree by God's word, knowing, knowing that he would, uh, Abraham would, uh, would probably do it. Abraham would just do it. Now, we see, we see the progression of 
the relationship between God and Abraham and why Abraham was willing to trust God in all things because God fulfilled every single promise he ever made to Abraham, right? So Abraham had absolute faith and trust in God. And he was even willing to lay his son on, a, on a, an altar and sacrifice him to God, okay? Do we ever turn that around and look at it the other way? Why did God ask Abraham to do all those things. Because God trusted Abraham to do all those things. It's a relationship that worked both ways. Right? Okay. So let's look at that a little bit, a little bit more. God asked Abraham to sacrifice his son. What did God know would happen? That he would sacrifice his son. That Abraham would lay his son on that altar and be prepared to sacrifice him. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. What did Abraham know of God? Jim, you mentioned this a little bit. Pardon? Say it again, Jim. He wouldn't allow it. You're wrong. He would stop. You're wrong. Okay. Abraham okay. didn't Abraham didn't know if God would stop the sacrifice or not. What did Abraham know? God would provide the sacrifice. Yes. That's there, but I, I'm, push, I'm pushing Jim because he's that close to it. I want him to, to push it a little bit further. What did Abraham absolutely know and believe, have faith and trust in that God would do? God would look after Isaac. Uh, Keep his promise. Keep yeah. his promise. Which, which promise? The, the, the promise nation. of making Isaac... Through Isaac, a great nation. How do we take the Isaac part out of that and say that Abraham had absolute faith and trust in God that there would be a great nation created right. from Abraham? Because God promised him. Because God's promise was there. Okay. If we were in that situation, could we have that much faith? Because what we were focusing on, what we've always focused on in this story, is Isaac is the key to the fulfillment of that promise, right? Mm -hmm. What if I told you Isaac is not the key to the fulfillment of that promise? Okay. Would you say it's time to get rid of that preacher because he's not making any sense? <laughs> <laughs> right what if i said to you the key to the fulfillment of that promise was neither abraham nor isaac but purely come on say it god faith purely god oh purely god god was the absolute assurance that whatever he said he was going to do, he would do. We focused on Abraham. We focused on Isaac, right? Come on, admit it. Yeah. <laughs> I admit it. Head's going to say, yeah, yeah, we admit it. Yeah, that's what we were focused on, right? Okay. Uh -huh. All right. Let me show you this. What did Abraham focus on? Did he focus on Isaac? He focused on God. But he focused God. solely on God. He wasn't not even his own understanding. Isaac. Pardon? Not even his own understanding. He focused on no. God alone. He focused solely on God. Who did Abraham know would fulfill that promise regardless of anything else? God. 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 God said he would make Abraham a great nation. 
He did. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, God said he would make Abraham a great nation through Isaac. Okay. What would be the possibility if Isaac's sacrifice was a way of making that great nation come, come to be? Never thought of that, did you? Well, there wouldn't be any offsprings from Isaac mm -hmm. to, to create that nation. Yep. Um, just let me throw something in here. Does God need uh, humanity to create offspring? No. No. Happened before, didn't it? Uh -huh. Yeah, okay. All right. So my point is this. We look at the story and we see it as a terrible shock, a test, a trial, temptation, all those kinds of things, because God's asking Abraham to do something, to sacrifice his son Isaac, right? Let's put that aside for a second. What's God really asking Abraham to do? Follow him. Totally obey. Put it in one single word. Trust. Obey. Trust. Trust. Trust him. Absolute trust. Abraham, yes, Lord, I'm here. I want you to do this. Yes, Lord, I'll do that. What's it show you? It shows you that Abraham trusted God implicitly. Yeah. Okay. It also shows us. Go ahead. And that Dulcie's in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> yep, Dulcie's in trouble. Um, Right. That's why I said we're going to let her do the back talking to God, not us. Okay. Um, it also shows that God had absolute trust in Abraham. Okay. Now, I want to walk you through this story in a couple more places. All right. Let's get the right mouse here. Um, well, verse 5. Uh, Jim told us that Abraham took two young men with him on this journey, right? Right. Okay. Just listen to this. Listen to this. Okay. He said to the young men, stay here with the donkey. The boy and I will go over there. We will worship. And then we will come we back. We will come back. Who? We. We. We will come back to you, okay? Let that one sink in, all right? So Abraham took the wood and the burnt offering, laid it on his son Isaac, and he carried the fire and all this stuff. So the two of them walked on. Isaac said to his father, Father, and Abraham said, Yes, here I am. Here I am, here I am, my son. He said, the fire and the wood are here, but where's the lamb for the burnt offering? And Abraham said, well, don't worry about that, because God's asked you to be the burnt offering. <laughs> Putting that in there? Oh, no, it's not what it says. Okay. No, it says God will provide the lamb. God will provide for the offering. Okay. Yeah. So the two of them walked on together. All right. Abraham built the offer, the altar, laid his son on it. Okay. What did Abraham know? Jim, you, you started talking about this at the beginning. What did Abraham know? Well, Matt, the, the, the answer I had for that one was he was either coming back with Isaac or Isaac's ashes. Yes. I think there's something more to it than that, though. I think Abraham knew that God had a reason for all of this. Abraham knew that even if Isaac was to be sacrificed, the promise would continue. But I have a feeling that Abraham knew this was not about Isaac. It was about Abraham and God. I think Abraham understood 
that if he had absolute faith in God, absolute trust in God, God would allow that covenant to stand. Mm -hmm. All Abraham had to do was trust God completely. And that covenant would stand. Okay. I think he knew it so well that he told the two young fellows, you stay there, we'll be back. We will be back. And don't worry, uh, God will provide the lamb for the burnt offering. Okay. Now start making your connections with uh, Jesus and Isaac. This is for Pete and Jim and those who wanted to make your connections earlier about uh, Isaac and Jesus and all those things, John 3, 16, okay? Jesus was at that point where he had to go and become the sacrifice, not just make a sacrifice. He had to go and become the sacrifice, okay? Did he know that what was going to transpire. We can say yes, in his divine state, he knew what was going to happen. But in his humanity, as, as a human, did he know what, he would, what would happen? He told his disciples, yes, on the third day again, you're gonna see me rise from the dead, right? But in his human form, was he that confident? I've often questioned that. Yes, we'll answer the question then. I don't know. I don't know. Yes, you do know. Yes, you do know. Uh, was Jesus absolutely confident? I know that when, when things are well beyond what you could be expected to handle, that you can trust God to carry you through it. So did Jesus know exactly step by step what was coming for him? I don't know that that is the case, but I do know that he would have had the trust. Okay. He, and I would say Jesus, that Jesus did ask, God at the time to take that bitter cup away from him. Yeah. Right. Finish so, the sentence though. But finish the sentence. Your will, not if my it's, will. Yeah. Oh, never, unless not, your will be done. Yours be done. Okay. I, will, I firmly believe that Jesus knew exactly what was going to happen. He tried to prepare his disciples for it. He told them what was going to happen. He told them he raised the he raised again on the third day, all of those kinds of things. He knew it. That was the divine state of Jesus. He knew it. Okay. What was the human state of Jesus? Same as Abraham's. Here I am. He trusted in God's promise. He trusted in God's word. Right? He knew God's word to be truth. If that's what God said, then Jesus knew that was the truth. That's what would happen. Okay. Abraham knew if this is what God said, then this is what will happen, regardless of what leads to that, regardless of what uh, is put in place before that. This is what God will do. God said it, God will do it. Right? How's God going to do it? I don't know. That's not up to me. That's up to God. Right? God will do it. Right? Uh, does it scare us sometimes to have absolute faith and trust? Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. Big time. Scares us so much sometimes that, guess what? We don't have we to trust. We turn away. We falter. We fail. Okay. Why does Abraham have that exalted place of being the father of faith? 
because he doesn't turn around. Because he didn't falter, right? Mm -hmm. Didn't falter. So, um, with Abraham, what did God provide? At the last minute, when when Isaac was on the on the altar and Abraham was standing there with his sacrificial dagger, what happened? The, the angel came the ram. The angel of the Lord came, stopped his hand, and God provided yeah. a ram. Okay. Very cool. Talk about taking it to the last minute. That takes a lot of faith on behalf of Abraham, don't you think? Mm -hmm. Isn't that amazing? That the very last minute, God stayed his hand and protected Isaac. Amazing, right? Okay. The very last minute... Just before they put Christ on the cross, what happened? You know the answer to this. I'm just I'm just dragging it out of you. What happened? Was something something given to take the place of Christ? The, uh, the two robbers. Yeah, they were there too, but was Christ miraculously removed from that whole thing and someone else put in its place? No. 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 What happened? No one's hand was stayed. Christ died. Right? What happened then? Descended into hell, third day rose again, went, and he's seated on the right hand of God the Father, right? Okay. Imagine the trust it took for Jesus to die, to just do that. Absolute faith that God was going to fulfill every promise he made, even though he had to die. Abraham was prepared to go to that point to sacrifice his son because he had absolute faith and trust in God to do it. All right? We can't say that Abraham was sure God was not going to take Isaac. We can't say that. Mm -hmm. But what we can say is that Abraham was absolutely certain that God would fulfill that promise in God's own way. Whatever it was going to take, whatever it was going to do, God would do it. Okay. Have we ever been tested in that way? No. Well, some say yes, some say no. Okay. The question becomes, will our faith stand such a test. Can we give up a part of our life knowing that God is there for us and every one of his promises is true? We have to. We have to. Sometimes, it, sometimes we just do it. Uh, some of the things that we're asked to give up, no problem. They're easy to do, but other things, no. Okay. Um, and then the question becomes, do we trust God enough that we accept what God will do? That's a dicey one, isn't it? Okay, so the next question is, can God trust you enough to deal with all the things that God lays before you. No, nope, so. nobody's, nobody's jumping up to answer that question. <laughs> That's a hard question, isn't it? I'm sure it is. But is it is it as hard knowing that it all hinges on us? 
or does it become a little bit easier knowing that it all hinges on God? It's the only way it can be. Yeah, it hinges on God. Abraham knew that. Abraham knew it was of God. Jesus knew it was of God. Okay. The truth was God. God was truth. Whatever God said was going to happen, is going to happen. All right. Um, we're in that situation. Can we accept it as the absolute truth? Yep. That's what our head tells us. What's the heart tell us? It's a lot harder than that. Right? But where does true faith come from? It's not just knowledge. It's built on a relationship with God. Abraham had close to 100 years to build that relationship with God and be absolutely convinced that what God said was true. The more we experience God, the more we can rely upon what God says is going to happen is going to happen. Okay. The more we go through with God, the more God knows he can rely upon us. Okay. So it's a wonderful story. It's a story about testing and, and trials and temptations, but not so much temptations as we understand them. It's more about a relationship between God and his people, God and yourself, God and Abraham. Okay. Isaac's a catalyst. Isaac's the thing that hinges everything around it. But it's about God, trust in you, and your trust in God. And if you look at this story, it's amazing because Abraham had absolute trust in God. But what's even more amazing is God had absolute trust in Abraham. Now, if God has that much faith in Abraham, can he have that much faith in you? Yes. Not yet. <clears throat> Some of you hesitate to answer. Some of you give a different answer. Okay. What's it, what's it hinge on? What would, be, what would it take for you to be able to say, yeah, God can trust me implicitly? The trials that we go through and when we serve. Okay. If God oh, said, to totally give of ourselves? Yep. What would it take for you to be able to do that and say, God can trust me implicitly? You have to give yourself up to him 100%. Right. But what do you have to have in order to be able to do that? What do you have Faith. to know? What, Faith. Love. Is, love, yes. How about trust. the assurance? How about the assurance that God will be with you in every single thing, and if God is with you, you will not fail? Yes. Mm -hmm. Anybody accept that? Yes. Mm -hmm. So the assurance that you need to be able to trust God completely and to know that God can trust you completely is the fact that God is... There for you. He'll, he'll going to be with you in every single thing, and give you the ability to endure every single thing. Even though sometimes we think, well, that didn't go so well, and I kind of got burned pretty bad, or I lost this, or I lost that. What will we never, ever lose? What do we never lose? What did Abraham no. never lose? No. What did Jesus no. never lose? Knowing that God is there for you. The absolute that. assurance that God is right there at all times. Sometimes we may not think so. Sometimes it may not look like that. Sometimes it may not feel like that. 
but God is there. And whatever God wants to happen through us, guess what? It's going to happen. <laughs> It'll happen. We may not have the strength to make it happen, but I know who does have the strength to make it happen. Right? Abraham didn't know what was going to really happen with his son on that altar, but he knew God knew. Right? Jesus really didn't know what was going to happen on that cross, but he knew God knew. We don't know what's really going to happen, but who does? God. God. So I think we're in pretty good hands. It's sort of like being a child when you 100% trust your father or your mother. Yep, 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 yep. That's right. Okay, uh, next week we're back to Matthew. You see the passage there. Matthew 11, 16 to 19, 25 to 30. Yes, there's a, there's a break in there, and we're looking at the first passage and the, and the third passage. So that's your, your reading for next week. Remember, please read it over a few times through the week and keep track of the things that jump out at you. Okay? Well, you guys what, were, what was that again, Steve? It's on the bottom Matthew. of your question page. You should have it on the bottom of your question page. All right. Oh, yeah. right. Okay. There it is. Okay. You guys were you guys were amazingly right on the nose today with a lot of this. All right. Keep reading. Read it two or three times. Let the Holy Spirit speak to you. Okay. Let's just have a word of prayer. Lord, we do come before you with praise and thanksgiving that we can trust you absolutely. And that somehow, amazingly, you trust us. But we find that so amazing. But we rejoice in it. Continue to watch and keep these your people. Be near to them this day and always. Amen. Have a wonderful day, folks. And we will Thank see you, you next week. Yep. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. See ya. Bye. Can't get to it. Steve meeting.